Hello and welcome to Unite and Prosper, where we will not be divided or conquered. And while you're watching this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and share, share, share. Who is Tim Walls? Yeah, I'm a bit late with this video, but it's been like rush hour traffic. And these videos I do, I am the only one and I'm just, that's just me. So I do my own research, writing, editing. So <laughs> I might be a little behind here, but anyway, uh, let's get back to the subject here of who is Tim Walls. Well, let's just call him Tim. Tim is the governor of Minnesota since January 7th of 2019, one year longer than the Biden-Harris debacle started, and one year before COVID started. So let's start there. He shut down businesses, and not just once, but twice, for two years. And if you opened your own business during that time, he'd shut you down permanently. Let's see how things went back then. But first, let me do an after video. This is uh, Tim about 10 days ago. You know, uh, what he wants people to think what he does or think what he thinks. In Minnesota, just like in Wisconsin, we respect our neighbors and the personal choices they make because we know there's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. Mind your own business. M-Y-O-B. <laughs> mind your own business. Well, let's see how much he really did mind his own business. America needs to know my story concerning Governor Tim Walz and uh, what he did to me as well as so many other uh, business owners in the state of Minnesota. Southern Minnesota was a lovely uh, wine and coffee bistro and it had been in operation for going on eight years uh, by the time that my business um, was shut down and destroyed. Governor Waltz and you know his staff, they were happy to sit home and collect a paycheck. Well, that's not something that I could do. Well, it don't look like he minds his business too much with them. Let's see what he did with a uh, bar business. We just wanted to find out. So you lost your bar and were forced into bankruptcy under Tim Walls? What happened? Um, well, essentially, Tim Walls had shut down our state with the entire country. The first shutdown on March 17th of 2020. On this November 20th of 2020, he decided to shut our state down for a second time when most of the nation has already was kind of starting to see that um, shutting down and social distancing was not maybe the most effective way to curb COVID. Um, he shut our state down and on December 16th, me and about 10 other business owners decided to open up our business and um, violate the unlawful executive orders. What ensued, ensued from there was I um, lost all my food licenses, I lost my liquor licenses, I was barred from the state. I lost two businesses. I own two different separate businesses. Um, barred from the state for having a liquor license for five years. Um, was forced to file personal bankruptcy. Was fined over $300,000 from the Attorney General of Minnesota, Keith Ellison. And now I own an amazing business in Wisconsin because if you look at what Tim Walls did when he shut down our state, he was crossing the border and coming into Wisconsin and going to dinner in the Wisconsin bars that he shut down in minnesota wait a minute didn't he say just a minute ago that he uh, minded his own business that his state the state of minnesota they mind their own business i'll be right back i want to go check and see what he said again in minnesota just like in wisconsin we respect our neighbors and the personal choices they make because we know there's a golden rule mind your own damn business yeah that's what he said hmm I thought I was wrong or misunderstood or misheard or, but anyway, let's see how he did. You know, remember them, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, peaceful protests that were going on in 2020 after the, uh, George Floyd debacle. Let's see how he handled that. The owner of Wild Greg's Saloon shut down his bar in Minneapolis. He says people were just simply too scared of crime to come downtown. Well, that bar owner is Greg Urban, and he joins me now. Thank you so much, Greg, for joining us. Uh, who do you blame for this? Would you blame Tim Waltz, the governor? I mean, what happened? Yeah, I think Tim Waltz is absolutely to blame. You know, Tim Waltz shut our state down for the better part of two years. And, you know, of course, then in the middle of the state being shut down, we, we had the riots. and. 
Minneapolis was completely devastated by the riots, and Tim Walls stood by and let that happen. And after the riots, the Minneapolis Police Department, which was already short-staffed, lost a significant portion of the officers that, that they had for that. And, and after that, the, the city kind of fell into disrepair, and Tim Walls basically stood by and, and let that happen. So, I guess he's treated as follows. If you're a business owner, you stay home. But if you're a rioter, I mean, <clears throat> if you're a peaceful protester, you can run amok. Well, let's check out and see uh, what these peaceful protesters were doing out on the streets. Here's a news broadcast in Minnesota from WCCO about the uh, um, protesting. Protests turned tense that day, and the next day, Wednesday, the governor said this. I was saddened to see that some of the protesters were in harm's way last night, and I just want to encourage everyone to be safe, especially in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. About four hours after that press conference, the mayor of Minneapolis, Jacob Fry, called the governor asking for the National Guard, according to a state Senate report. There was reportedly confusion about whether that call constituted a formal request, something that has to happen to activate the guard. A couple hours later, in a tweet, the governor asked people to protest peacefully and safely. At 9-11 that night, another request from then Police Chief Madera Arredondo asking the state in an email for 600 National Guard soldiers. But an independent review commissioned by the city found the request did not follow established policies or protocols. Proper protocol? What? You mean a phone call and then an email telling the governor his city's getting burnt to the ground and they need more assistance isn't proper protocol? I can see it now. Well, if the warning would have been sent properly, the Middle East wouldn't have been able to blow us off the face of the earth without a nuke attack. Yeah, you feel safe now? The looting and fires continued that night and into the next day. At 10.55 the next morning, Thursday now, Mayor Fry's office sent Walls a formal request for the guard. By 4 p.m., the governor had them activated. That night, about 45 minutes after Minneapolis police abandoned the 3rd Precinct, the guard tweeted more than 500 soldiers had been activated to the Twin Cities. Still, that night was not peaceful. This can perhaps be explained, at least in part, by something the state commissioned report says, that the Guard and State Patrol were asked to provide services outside of their training. They didn't have experience responding to a large-scale civil disturbance. So the Minnesota National Guard didn't have experience to protect Minnesota. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? I seem to remember something come up about, oh, some guy got shot in the ear a couple of weeks ago, and one of the reasons was because some of the guards weren't experienced. Or, I don't know, something like that. Somebody couldn't even put a gun in her holster. Or, I don't know. It, it sounds familiar. And one more story from that same news channel after all the uh, <clears throat> protesting was over with. This is about the uh, police station that got burned during those um, protests. Police officers testified at the Minnesota Senate today. The officers are all board members for the Minneapolis Police Federation. And as Esme Murphy reports, they offered up a scathing critique of government and police leaders during the riots following George Floyd's death. That's not what we stand for. Her voice shaking, Minneapolis Police Sergeant Anna Hedberg says during the riots, officers were abandoned by state, city, and department leaders. To watch them go through that was so heartbreaking to know that they could have died because we were not allowed to respond the way that we have been trained to respond. During the riots, the officers were told they could not wear protective frog suits, but were still hit and injured with bottles, cement, and more. Sergeant Hedberg blamed state, city, and department leaders for the abandonment of the third precinct. I heard the governor say, give it up. It wasn't directly to me, it was through a, through a phone call. Now the governor says, give up the precinct. I mean, that's, that's demoralizing for this whole state. And the three described a demoralized police force with dozens of officers planning to retire or quit. I believe I speak for every Minneapolis cop when I tell you that 
I've never been more publicly humiliated. They also described a city out of control. The crime is rampant in Minneapolis right now. And how did he treat his residents during all this time of, of the COVID experience? Well, he had a curfew of 8 p.m. And that curfew meant you go inside your home. No questions asked. Here's a little snippet of a video I had uh, on a previous video I did of what happens if you're even on your own porch past 8 o'clock. Get inside! Get in your house now! Let's go! Light him up! Go inside now! Get, inside Get in the house! Yep, that's right. You get paintball shot. <laughs> Man, that's a nice governor. You can destroy businesses. You can burn down police stations. You can, you know, protest all you want. But don't you dare stand on, on your porch peacefully. Well, let's check out this uh, controversial uh, executive order that he uh, did last year. In this state, hate has no home. In this state, love and acceptance is what we preach. Governor Tim Walz on Wednesday took action he says is urgent in the face of increasing political attacks on the LGBTQ community nationwide. His executive order instructs state agencies to protect access to gender affirming health care and not comply with investigations in other states where services may be restricted or outright banned. So he did an executive order that keeps any ban or even restrictions to gender affirming health care, a.k.a. the body manipulation surgery to look like the opposite sex of what you were actually born as. Now, the controversy is that this executive order also pertains to allowing underage children to get this type of surgery without parental consent. Now, I'm not 100% sure this is true, but what I do wonder is, why does he have that little girl standing next to him if it wasn't true? Well, there is one thing I know is true. Tim was a liar. I'm sure you all heard about his stolen valor, where he talks about his role in the war while he was serving in the National Guard, you know, fighting in combat, being in Iraq, when in reality he was in Italy and never was on the war front at all fighting. And, of course, his DUI, well, he got pulled over for going 95 in a 55 mile per hour zone, ignoring the police, you know, taking a while to, to pull over for him, and then failed the breathalyzer test. But the team said that was a lie. He drove himself to the station and then was allowed to drive himself home. The DUI charges were dropped because they were unfounded, and the cop didn't realize the Walls had a hearing impairment. But that was all found out to be a lie. Walls spoke sloppily, should not have represented a role that he had as having been a permanent role when it wasn't. But the DUI story is, is indefensible. Casey, you and I know a thing or two about congressional campaigns. They're very small, they're very tight. There's usually like a paid campaign manager and a paid spokesperson, and that's it. So the idea that this came from his spokesperson and it didn't come from him, I don't buy it. And the idea that he tried to lay it off on a hearing disability from the National Guard Service through the spokesperson while denying things that the K-File investigation proved to be inaccurate, I think is a real issue for him. In the end, it's going to be about the top of the ticket. But to me, the DUI is bigger than the stolen valor allegation, not because of the drinking, but because of the lie. Well, that's a little bit on Tim Walters, governor of Minnesota. And to give you my two cents worth, well, the first impression I got when he walked out on stage with Vice President Harris for the first time was, do they let him out much? He looked like this was the first time he's been out and about for a long time. He's so excited and stuff. Just like a kid in the candy store. Seemed a bit weird to me. He walked out, you know, bow, big, white, wow, people, looky. I mean, he don't smile. He opens his mouth like, I don't know, a bird, baby bird, ready to eat. Got the old double hand wave. The wow, look. Oh, they're over there, too. Man, look at them. Yeah, let's clap for them, too. Yeah. Oh, look at them people over there, too. Wow, can you see that? All them people. Oh, I just can't believe this. Oh, look, I'm outside. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Oh, the people. God. <laughs> 
But seriously, Tim Walz is a perfect running mate for Vice President Harris because he seems to be just as far to the left as she is. You know, Harris talks down on our southern border wall, but when it comes to her safety, they put a wall up around the DNC that uh, starts this week. Just another action that proves that they are only out for themselves and only call on the people once every four years to get their votes. Well, I thank you for watching the video, and I hope you enjoyed it and gave you some information that you weren't already aware of. Be sure to share this with anyone you feel needs to see it, because come November 6th, it will be too late.